Okay, so let's now return to the perceptron and think about how do kernels relate to that specific model? How can we use them in that specific model? So we saw that we could write the uh, feature expanded decision in this way. Uh, what we want to do is for a new, a new x naught, we project it into its higher dimensional space using the function phi. We project each of the uh, data points that are in the set M into a higher dimensional space phi. Remember that this, this set M was constructed by sequentially picking misclassified sam uh, examples from the data set. And now, instead of actually taking these two dot, pro these dot products between these points, we replace them with a kernel function between these two points. And now let's pick the radial basis function and set a equals 1, so we have less to write, and see what is the decision that we make based on the radial basis function. So in that case, if we use the radial basis function as uh, the kernel, then we're making our decision to be the sign of the sum of the kernel function between uh, the new point x naught and an old point x i in the set m. So that kernel function times the label, which is going to be either plus 1 or minus 1 of the point x i. So again, notice that for this kernel function, the higher dimensional mapping is actually an infinite dimensional thing, so we could never even write it out anyway. But we never have to write out, out that, dimension, that higher dimensional mapping because we only need the dot product. So why, why could this possibly be useful? Why might we want to do this? So let's look at what is the decision that's being made in this particular case. So in a sense, we're we're letting each of the data points in the set M vote for a label for the new point x naught. And if a point x i is close to x naught, then this function will be closer to 1. And so we'll have the label times a, a, a number closer to 1. Or if we have a point x i in the set M that's very far away in the space from x naught, then this will be essentially 0. And so we then take the label and weight it by something that's essentially 0. And then we take the labels of all of the points in our set m, and we weight them by this function that takes into account how close the new point x naught is to that point x i. And then we sum it up. So it's like saying that if x naught is very close to x i, then I trust what the label, I trust that it's going to sh more likely share the label of xi. Whereas if x naught is very far away from xi, then I can't say whether or not it's going to share the label with xi. So I'm going to, I want to weight the labels of the data points that I am closer to more highly and weight the things that I'm far away from less and less. And then sum those weighted labels up. So now I'm actually summing. Uh, I'm summing the positive weights for all of the uh, positive labeled uh, points in M. And then I'm subtracting all of the weights for all of the negatively labeled points in class minus 1 that are in M. And I'm seeing which is, which is bigger. If it's positive, then I know that I'm closer, to, I'm closer on the average to plus 1 labeled points. And if it's negative, I'm closer on average to minus one labeled points. And so in a sense it's like soft voting. I'm letting the I'm letting the labeled points in the set M do a soft voting. It's almost like a soft nearest neighbors in a sense. Okay, so we've discussed um, making predictions with the perceptron and how we don't need to do the mapping. We can just use the kernel. However, um, you might be thinking that there was also an algorithm that we had to run for learning the, the sequence of misclassified points. Um, and that also will require a higher dimensional mapping as well. So how can we, do we have to actually do the high dimensional mapping to learn the, the perceptron, to actually pick the set M, the sequence of misclassified points? 
And again, the answer is no. We never actually need to construct, uh, need to calculate this feature mapping. We only have to actually work with the kernel function between different points in our data set. So let's go back to the original uh, space. The, uh, there's no mapping. We're not mapping the data. We're in the original data space. Recall that at iteration t, we had a, uh, a separating hyperplane that's defined by this vector w at iteration t that we had constructed by taking a sum of the misclassified points up to iteration t like this. So this is our linear classifier at iteration t of the perceptron. We then updated this as follows. We first found a new x prime in the data set such that uh, we predicted incorrectly given this classifier. So, so go through our data set for each x uh, prime c. Does the classifier at iteration t predict, uh, predict the associated label y prime correct, correctly or incorrectly? And the first one that we come across that's incorrect, pick that x prime. We then add the index of x prime to this misclassified set m to get m t plus 1 now points. So we have t plus 1 points. And then we update the classifier by taking the old classifier plus the uh, weight y prime, or the label y prime times x prime. Or equivalently, we can simply say add up all of the misclassified covariates pre multiplied by the sign of their, their label. So again, if we look at how we're picking out the misclassified points, how are we, how are we constructing this, uh, this set M sequentially? We're, we're only ever using dot products. Again, we only ever need to look at dot products to decide whether, we're gonna misclass whether our current classifier misclassifies a point or doesn't misclassify a point. So if we expand WT by replacing it with, uh, with what it's a function of, and then we write the dot products out. Uh, and then we expand this uh, the features into a higher dimensional space. We see that all we need to do is calculate the kernel function. So actually, this is like what we've been discussing, um, making predictions on new data points. We're simply here trying to make predictions on the data uh, that we already have and see which, which things in our current data set that we're learning the classifier on do we predict incorrectly? And so the in intuition here is exactly the same as what we've been discussing. So really what we need to do is find a label that's not equal to the sign of the, uh, the sign, the, the, the label weighted kernel functions between a new point and some point already in our misclassified set. So in order to find a misclassified point, we only need to calculate the kernel between uh, a a uh, proposed point and the points in our current misclassified set. And then when we want to augment the, mis the set mt to get the set mt plus 1, we can simply take the index of the misclassified point, but we never actually bother to calculate the uh, new classifier because we never need it. We only ever need dot products. So we've seen um, that we can do kernelized perceptron, uh, where all we ever need to do is to define the kernel function between any two points in our data set in order to learn the, the, the kernel, uh, in order to learn the classifier, or between a new uh, query point and the points in the set M that we construct of indexes of data points that we pick out from our data set that were misclassified at some point during uh, the inference or the learning of the kernel perceptron. So let's see how, how can we uh, do a quick extension. So this is something that's a very quick extension of this idea, something called kernel KNN. So this is um, basically taking the kernelized perceptron and generalizing it to a soft KNN with a very simple change. So instead of constructing this um, sequence of, of misclassified data points, which we uh, have in the set M using the, kernel, uh, using the kernelized perceptron. 
So instead of picking out a subset of our data points and saying, I'm only going to use these uh, data points to classify any new data point and essentially throw away all of the data that uh, the, all of the other data that we have. Why don't we instead calculate, uh, construct this set M to have all of the data that we have? So instead of summing over all I in some index set M, let's just sum over every single data point in our data set where we let each data point vote on the label of the query point x naught. So we calculate the kernel. This is again, we'll pick the RBF kernel between a query point x naught and the point xi in our data set. This will be big if x naught is close to xi. It'll be very, it'll be very small, essentially zero, if x naught is very far away from xi. And that's how much we're going to weight the label of xi in this voting scheme. Now, if we want to intuitively uh, think, you know, what does this mean? We could divide this number by the sum of the weights. So this is arbitrary. We define z to be the sum of these weights, and then define a probability distribution that takes in a point x naught, where the ith dimension of that distribution can be viewed as like a probability for the ith data point in our data set. So this is like a probability for a query to x naught to the ith data point in our set. And then we declare y naught to be the sign of this weighted uh, average of the labels in the data set. So this, is, this, this, this decision would be identical with this decision. But in a sense, we can, we can now interpret uh, this as like a probability distribution on all of the data points in our data set for a given query point. And this distribution is going to be have high probability on the points that are closer to x naught, essentially zero probability on the points that are far away from x naught. And then we're only going to take into consideration the labels of the points that are close to x naught in making our uh, decision. So in a sense, <coughs> we can think of this as a, a, a soft or a kernelized KNN, where k is just equal to the number of data points. We allow every single data point to give a vote on the label of a query point, but then we weight that vote, vote according to a confidence score. And we're more confident in the votes of the, la of the data points that we're close to according to our kernel, uh, and not confident at all about the, the vote of the label of the points that we're far away from. So in a sense, we notice that the only difference between this classifier and the kernelized perceptron is that the kernelized perceptron only allows a, sol a small subset of the data points to vote for the label. And that subset is determined according to the rule of picking out a sequence of misclassified points. Whereas this allows every point to, to give a vote. However, when we define B, we're going to define it such that for any point x naught, we're only looking in a small window around x naught. And so we're only going to look at really a small subset of the data points in our data set to give a vote um, that are within a window or within kind of a horizon defined by B. And then the data points that are far away as uh, according to the definition of B, essentially because this is decreasing extremely fast as this uh, value gets bigger and bigger, essentially those points are given zero weight. 